CataractCoach.com. Cataract Quiz. Why did the IOL decenter? This is post on week one. Our guest surgeon is Dr. Valentin Bachet from France. And this is a surgery that was done by a different surgeon and then referred to Dr. Bachet to correct. And we can see the eye was very much decentered. First step was going in the main incision and injecting viscoelastic to open up the capsular bag to see exactly what's going on. You can see that one haptic of the IOL looks like it's twisted. And if you look in the sub-incisional space, there's a big spot of residual cortex that wasn't removed. Now, it could be that that haptic got stuck in that cortex. It could be that the haptic was placed in the eye inadvertently with a twist in it. But you can see as the lens is centered again, that haptic just to the right of the cannula, it's in an odd position here. So now going in the paracentesis and really seeing what can be done here, and you probably want to bring that haptic centrally. And now when we pull the optic, now we can see, look at the twist of the haptic. And in fact, it is stuck at the equator of the capsule bag with that twist. And there's a big wad of lens cortex that's still sitting in the sub space. So more OVD going in the eye, that's a dispersive viscoelastic. And then now, Using this instrument, we can bring the lens up and you can see that haptic is seemingly stuck at the caps or bag equator where that residual lens cortex is. So there it's finally freed. You can see it twists back into its normal position. And now the lens can be centered pretty nicely. But an important step now is you got to get out that sub cortex. And so the lens should be rotated. And as the lens is rotated, those haptics will push against that residual lens cortex and help really loosen it up to make it easier to remove. Now, sometimes with this sub-incisional area, it's easier to go in with a bimanual approach for irrigation aspiration. Sometimes using the coaxial device is very difficult to reach in that sub-incisional space. So you can see here, lens is being rotated both directions to really free up that lens cortex. And then once that's done, it can be reasonably uh, aspirated pretty easily. So more viscoelastic going in the eye. You can also inject the viscoelastic via the paracentesis right at the subincisional cortex. And if you inject it in that direction, that'll also help free it up. But you can see this lens definitely wants to stay centered now, now that the haptics are in the appropriate orientation. So a little bit more rotation here. And then time to remove that residual lens cortex. Now, you can certainly use the same incision. The surgery was only done about a week ago. But notice how this incision is completely avascular. And so that incision may not seal really well in terms of long-term healing. And so here you go. There's the irrigation aspiration using the coaxial one going in the sub-incisional space. And it can be aspirated. And once that is out, this patient is going to have a lot better outcome. That residual lens material, that cortex, if you leave it behind, it'll cause a lot of inflammation. And you want to have this eye relatively quiet. So there we go. There's the incision. You can see it's not quite at the limbal edge. It's a little bit too central. Hydrating it up here to seal it. And then likely a 10 nylon suture to ensure absolutely watertight sealing. So really interesting case here. You got to remember if a patient like yours or like this has a problem in the post eye period and you notice the lens is decentering, you have to figure out why. And in this case, just going back inside the eye for a relatively easy procedure is going to give the patient a much nicer post op result. Thank you, Dr. Bache, for a great case. I know you love the YouTube videos, but check out the website, cataractcoach.com. A lot easier to navigate. We have a complete list of articles and videos. You can go and check on any of these categories and explore more. You can also search. There's a search engine that's really effective. You can see Gore-Tex lenses like this. And finally, you can look up about me. There's a link that has my surgical instruments. Now you don't even have to ask me. You can just find out for yourself what's the name of those forceps.